People once laughed at Bitcoin, calling it a joke. But today, one Bitcoin is worth a million dollars. It is more valuable than gold or any other asset on the planet. It is held by banks and used by countries. What is Bitcoin? Who created it? And how did it disrupt the world's financial system? I am Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin, and I'm going to answer all your questions. Bitcoin began as a mysterious idea in 2008, but by 2021, El Salvador became the first country to make it legal tender. Millions there now use Bitcoin daily for payments and remittances. In 2022, during Ukraine's crisis, Bitcoin helped raise over $100 million in aid, proving vital when banks failed. Argentina faced soaring inflation in 2023, and many turned to Bitcoin to protect their savings, with crypto trading rising sharply. Across Africa, countries like Nigeria and Kenya saw over 20% of their populations adopt crypto by 2024, mainly via mobile wallets. The United States leads in crypto innovation, with 50 million Americans owning cryptocurrency by 2024. Clearer regulations and approved Bitcoin ETFs made it easier to invest. While China banned Bitcoin mining and trading, in 2021, many countries created their own digital currencies. By 2025, Bitcoin's market cap exceeds $1.2 trillion, with over 200 million users worldwide. Its network processes over 300,000 transactions daily. This is the world I woke up in, where Bitcoin is no longer just an idea, but a force changing money forever. Bitcoin's path to acceptance was far from smooth. Magical internet money. It has no intrinsic value. It makes it valuable. In the early days, many powerful voices dismissed Bitcoin as a fad or a scam. Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan Chase, famously called Bitcoin a fraud in 2017. Bitcoin trades for how it trades, why it trades, who trades it. If you're stupid enough to buy it, you'll pay the price for it one day. Governments also saw Bitcoin as a threat. In 2013, Christine Lagarde, then head of the IMF, described cryptocurrencies as a combination of bubble, fraud, and environmental disaster. Regulators feared Bitcoin's decentralized nature would make it impossible to control money laundering, tax evasion, and illicit trade. Major banks and financial institutions saw Bitcoin as competition to their traditional systems. They profited from controlling money flow and transaction fees. Bitcoin's peer-to-peer -peer model cut them out. China's government, once the leader in Bitcoin mining, banned it in 2021, citing environmental concerns and worries about capital flight. They wanted to protect the Yuan and maintain strict control over the financial system. It followed in the footsteps of earlier digital currency failures. Like eGold, which was shut down in 2009, these systems failed because they were controlled by single companies vulnerable to government shutdown. Yet despite this pushback, Bitcoin's decentralized design meant no one institution could shut it down. Its open source code and global network made it resilient. And eventually institutions began to reconsider. BlackRock's 2021 Bitcoin ETF launch Tesla's Bitcoin investment and PayPal's integration marked a turning point, proof that even the skeptics could not ignore the future. Bitcoin challenged the old financial order and that made it powerful and dangerous to those who benefited from the status quo. Bitcoin wasn't born in one day and I wasn't the first to imagine it. For decades, cryptographers and computer scientists dreamed of digital money that no government could control. In the 1980s, David Chaum built DigiCash, digital currency meant to protect privacy, but it relied on a company, and it failed when the company collapsed. In the 1990s, Wei Dai proposed B-Money, and Nick Sabo wrote about BitGold, systems that aim to remove banks and middlemen, but they remained ideas, unsolved, unrealized. Then came 2008. Banks collapsed. The global economy fell to its knees. Millions lost jobs, homes, savings. But those who caused the crash, the banks, the executives, were rescued. The system protected the powerful and punished the people. I saw the truth. Money, the thing we all work for, save, spend, was broken. Not by accident, but by design. It was controlled by a few, printed without limit, manipulated behind closed doors. Inflation quietly drained people's savings year after year, and no one asked why. But the problem didn't start in 2008. In 1971, the US government removed the dollar from the gold standard money stopped being backed by anything real. From that moment, it became just numbers, created at will by central banks for those in power. How could people trust a system like that? So, I built Bitcoin, 
I didn't invent every part. I borrowed from giants. B-Money, BitGold, Proof of Work, Digital Signatures. But I found a way to make it all work. On October 31st, 2008, I published the white paper, Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, a currency that didn't need banks, didn't need trust. It ran on code, verified by thousands, owned by no one. To mark its birth, I placed a message inside the very first block. The Times March 1st, 2009 Chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks. That was no accident. It was a timestamp and a warning. Bitcoin was built for a reason, to give the people something the old system never would, freedom. Think of Bitcoin like Lego blocks. Each block is a record of people sending money to each other, a transaction. Stack them up and you get a chain. That's the blockchain. But before a new block is added, it has to be checked. That job goes to miners, thousands of computers solving a hard math puzzle. The winner gets to add the block and everyone else checks their work. If it's right, the block is locked in forever. It's like a diary that no one can erase and everyone can read. Now, how do you keep your Bitcoin safe? With a private key, it's like a secret password that unlocks your treasure chest. Only you have the key and no one else can touch your coins. No banks, no bosses, just code, math and rules that everyone follows. That's how Bitcoin works. Simple blocks, shared truth and freedom by design. I wasn't alone for long. Hal Finney, a brilliant mind, received the first ever Bitcoin transaction. He believed in the vision. He ran the software. He made it real. Others joined too. Quiet builders, curious coders. They debated on forums, tested the limits, fixed the bugs. And then came the first real world trade. Two pizzas, paid for with 10,000 Bitcoin. Just a fun experiment. But it proved the point. This internet money could become real money. Word spread. So did curiosity. WikiLeaks started accepting Bitcoin when no bank would touch them. Activists used it to escape censorship. People in broken economies used it to store value. Not in banks, but in math, but not everything was noble. Some used Bitcoin to trade in shadows. On sites like Silk Road, it became infamous. Then came Mt. Gox, the first big exchange. At one point, it handled 70% of all Bitcoin trades until it vanished, taking hundreds of millions with it. It was messy. It was flawed, but the network never stopped. It didn't crash, it didn't judge. It just kept running. That was the moment I knew it was alive. Not mine anymore, but something bigger. Something that could survive the chaos of the real world. As Bitcoin grew, so did the noise. What began as quiet code became headlines. The world started asking questions. Who built this? Who do we arrest? Who do we praise? Journalists hunted for a face. Governments wanted a name. Some thought I was a genius. Others, a criminal, a myth, a ghost. But they all missed the point. I was never the story. The idea was, Bitcoin didn't need a leader. It needed to be leaderless. That was the whole point. So I stepped back, then I vanished. No interviews, no fame, just silence. And yet, Bitcoin kept going. It grew, not because of me, but because of you. You, the builders the believers, the skeptics, the dreamers. You taught your kids how wallets work. You helped strangers recover their keys. You ran the nodes, you mined the blocks, you told the story. Bitcoin became more than software. It became a movement. In the hands of the world's forgotten, it became power. In corrupt economies, it became hope. In times of crisis, it became freedom. It's not perfect, it's not finished, but it's yours now. I was just the first spark, you, are the fire. And as long as someone, somewhere runs a node, this idea, this truth, you know, will never disappear. Don't forget to subscribe to keep watching such great videos.